What's up gamers and welcome to a new episode of Last Claudia. That's right ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another one of those little videos about some instructions on how to have a fun play in this game. Uh, this time I'm playing, displaying Sevia because she's been the main go-to. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you that I've actually completed her entire board. Uh, it took me a very long time to do so and not because it necessarily takes forever but I spread myself so thin with leveling so many characters that, you know, uh, it just happens that way. But notice at the bottom left, bottom right, you know, basically on the four corners, there's extra abilities here. So there's a reason that this is here, and I'll explain why for those who don't know. Once you've enhanced a character to their full enhancement, so all the stars for the enhanced part, it will unlock four abilities for each character that they can learn on top of the standard that they have. So that's the importance of enhancing. As a matter of fact, I would almost argue that enhancing is probably slightly more important than awakening. Awakening is important too, don't get me wrong. I haven't quite got her max yet. Because with awakening, you help, you know, their overall stats and then their special abilities. But if you are trying to learn their skill tree, this is awake enhancing is the way to go as a matter of fact i'll go to the uh lay that i first was pushing for i also got her back style but unfortunately i don't have everything filled yet here uh so if you look at this board there's still a few things i've gotten the bottom left uh the top left i just got recently uh, i haven't grabbed that yet and i've already grabbed the bottom right which is grand protection one of her you know better of skills and now that i'm on uh, white knight melza one thing i kind of want to mention about her in combination with other people is she is one of the characters in this game that i would consider was called a hybrid basically a hybrid character is someone who doesn't really have a dominant skill in terms of offense so her base stats as far as strength and intelligence is a difference of less than 200 so any character that has that kind of a small difference like that, it basically means that you need to be a little more creative in how you want to build them. Now, in a previous video, I mentioned that I wanted to make her more defensive, and that's still somewhat the case, but what I'm going to be doing once I get other abilities is I'm going to focus more on the guard abilities and not so much on the defense abilities. So I like the HP ups, the defense ups, it won't all be necessary. I'll keep some of the freebies and maybe one of like the max ones, but I'm gonna be focusing more on enhancing her strengths. Uh, for example, uh, the Glimmer of the Sword grants additional light attributes to regular attacks. And also with her ability skill set, uh, she has the ability to cast, you know, holy type spells. So with that being said, the idea here is to get all the guard abilities since she is very tanky naturally but also enhance anything that could make the light spells a bit better something that increases critical something that increased lighter i call it holy uh, but holy damage you know a little bit more those are going to be the things i'm going to be focusing on because it's going to help her with spells and physical damage since it's all holy based uh, so that's an idea that I'm going to be doing with her. Um, you can also work on a counter build where you do counter and, and the, the bigger counter one, I think it's like counter two or something. Uh, you could also do something like that. Uh, but I like this for her. And also one thing I do want to go over too is uh, certain characters have alternates. And I just recently pulled uh, Mills' as alternate. So instead of White Knight, you also have Soul Reaper. Now... I'm not going to really be pushing her right away, only because I've invested so much in other characters, I just cannot afford to push her any. So I'm going to give you a little advice that I kind of wish I'd have done in the beginning. So as far as like the clusters, uh, crystals, stuff like that, you should really use it for like one or two people and focus on those because that's what's going to help you unlock the abilities a lot faster for each person. Because if you're just doing everybody that you have like five or six people will say and you're like using all your you know clusters and crystals and everything on six different people it's going to take you forever to max out any of these boards what i'd also recommend doing too is wait until you've learned everything and then enhance 
because then when you enhance, you unlock the board more and then you can learn more. I've seen a lot of people, and I did this too, who basically enhance as much as they can, but they only got half the board filled because they can't afford to get the stuff they need. Don't rush into enhancing if you don't have the resources to learn the skills. Does that make sense? So, you know, what I'm going to be doing is since I've already filled this up, I'm going to be giving her one more enhancement. And then I'm going to be using whatever crystals and stuff that I have to help her learn these other abilities and enhance her again. That's really the best way to enhance characters. Um, just do it one or two characters at a time so you're not spreading yourself thin. Because like I said, I did that hardcore when I first played the game and I haven't re-rolled at all. I hear a lot of stories of people re-roll to get, you know, new arcs or characters. I didn't do none of that at all. But this is something for those of you who are free to play or semi free to play, which is what I am, because I might spend 10 bucks here and there and it'd be once a month, but that's about the most that I've done lately. Um, you know, but this is a good idea for those who want to, you know, make sure that they can learn everything that they need to. I mean, because if you have money, you know, if you're spending hundreds and thousands of dollars in the game, this tip doesn't matter to you because you can just buy the stuff you need and just put it all together. Uh, but, but if you're a free-to-play player and you have to grind for everything, this is going to be your best way to make sure that certain characters are the best. And also, I wanted to go over one more character, then I'll give you guys a little bit of uh, action here. So I've actually been working on Prim on the side. I meant to show her on the last video, and I completely forgot. Uh, so what's cool about her, I like the uh, Tomboy Princess ability. It gives her automatic speed and haste. And what's important about that is that she's going to be naturally fast. And with her being fast and very physical, in my opinion, she's a hybrid character too, so you don't necessarily have to put strength and all that on her. But it's the speed that I'm working so with. This is me trying to be creative with this character. So the abilities that I'm actually learning for, or skill set, I should say, I'm actually focusing on the research abilities. So poison, blind, silence, and curse research. I actually already have equipped on her, so when she's hitting bosses or hitting just whoever, there's a chance that certain abilities can hit. Uh, as far as bosses are concerned, the only thing that I see that's effective is the poison and sometimes the blind. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen anyone get cursed yet, and the silence, I think, happens to, like, regular, like, monster, but not, like, bosses. But I think that this is an interesting idea, and I'm going to kind of play with this build to see how well that works. I think it's pretty cool. The only other thing that I need to do is give her the ability to equip a hammer. And I'm going to equip a, an item that also can uh, do stun. Uh, just to give her, like, the total package. And I think there's one more ability that can do something negative that I'll learn later on. But I kind of want to go over that just to kind of show you that with hybrid characters, there are things you can do other than just, you know, upping their attack and upping their magic. Like, be a little more creative and you might be able to find some cool stuff. Oh, and by the way, she's fully enhanced and awakened. And actually, this will be the perfect example of what I was just talking about earlier, how you shouldn't enhance to begin with. Take a look at my abilities. Check this out. I've barely even scratched the surface. Like, I've literally only did, like, the beginning stuff for, like, the first enhancement, and I've barely touched the second, if I've even touched it at all. Oh, yeah, I touched it a little bit, but... Not much at all. So you see what I mean? I have all these full enhancements, including her, uh, you know, extra abilities, which is skill max, the, the four corners, if you will, uh, the wave bullet, all this. I'm not going to be learning any of this for a very long time because I just don't have the resources to go that far because, you know, there's so many characters to deal with. So what I've decided to do going forward is I'm going to be focusing on one character at a time. So I finished Evia, I'm going to do Melza, the White Knight version. Then I'm debating on either finishing doing Prim or just finishing uh, Lena. Because Lena is the one that I've actually been working on mage-wise the most. And uh, I haven't actually fully enhanced her, so I don't have her Four Corners abilities yet. But I do have a lot of her stuff pretty close to learned. Uh, so once I'm done with Melza, I'll go probably over here, get her story stuff, get her fully enhanced, and then learn all those abilities. So that's something that, you know, you should always consider. Now, as far as like the whole awakening thing, some might say, well, what's better? Should you just awaken them first and then up their skills later? Or should I up, or should I update their uh, skill set points? Oh, I'm in the wrong area. Or should I update the skill set points and not worry about the uh, 
Awakening. Honestly, that's debatable. Uh, I mean, honestly, if you want to play it smart, what I would probably recommend doing, which is what I might do going forward, focus on Awakening first. Because with even though you're going to have a very limited amount of skill sets, uh, keep in mind that the game is now giving you what's called Mother Souls, which I have some of. So in worst case scenario, if you need to really get an ability, just use the Mother Souls to, you know, help push those skills. Because the Mother Souls only work for up at your skill points. It has nothing to do with your actual Awakening. So I would focus on with your regular, you know, Hero Souls, do the Awakening. And then with Mother Souls, use those to do the skills. And then once you've finished all of your Awakenings, then you can go back and focus on up at your skill points. And with that being stated, if you're going to be having limited skill points, then you should limit what type of abilities you should learn. Because since you're going to have a limited amount of skills anyway, why learn all these extra crazy abilities that's going to cost so much if you can't afford to use them? You know, so that's why with her right now, I'm not using a high level magic champ because it would cost nine and I'd rather just have other things. Now, late game, she's going to definitely have it. I'm actually surprised I haven't learned it for because I know I learned it with some of my other mages. But, you know, uh, just keep in mind that you can sort of min-max with this game. It's one of the more cooler things about this game is there's so much... There's so many ways you can play the game and you can customize things that, uh, you know, it, it just makes it fun. And, you know, everybody can be a little bit creative. Also, with some of the new updates, they have updated the friend point part so now you can actually use your frame points to get better stuff than you once did um i get a lot of the uh cross clusters and crystals here uh i've even got one and sometimes three mother souls in these as well i'm not sure if three is the the biggest one or if there's one higher but i know that i've gotten three and i've gotten one at a time before so if you you know have been saving up those frame points like i was for the longest time because i didn't really find them useful because i thought it was super expensive and not worth it i blew like all of it and got so many good things it helped me catch up big time uh, as far as events are concerned right now we just finished the holiday thing no i didn't pull any of the arcs i wanted or the characters or nothing and that's fine I, i'll live uh, but right now you have the ability to get all of the whatever you know color crystals and stuff that you need uh, you can work on transcendence if you want and then, of course, you know, they're going, the more important thing here is a training dungeon you can do once a day. And they have a special training dungeon as well, which is very important to do, not only because you get a lot of experience in Zell, but you, you the events, every time you play each day, you get extra diamonds here. So, you know, crystals, that's what they're called. You get extra crystals for doing it each day, and it's completely worth it. Uh, another thing, too, that I want to point out with the uh, events is it's kind of doing two different things. The Record of Glory is the newest thing, but they also have these invasions of different um, creatures that you can play. You should play through them all at least once just to get the crystals. But there's a reason that this game is is doing this right now. Make it to where you can get Because this is getting you souls for these creatures. And you're like, I don't want to play these creatures. Why would I waste my time? Well, there is an important reason. I'm pretty confident with events coming up, it's going to require that you have more uh, collectibles to use as opposed to just three or four, you know, because I've already predicted that, you know, we're going to have arena four play or four characters, which is confirmed in the JP version. And from what I've been hearing on other YouTube channels is that the tower that's supposed to be coming soon will all will be featuring, I guess, 12 characters so this is a way of the game sort of preparing you in case you haven't been lucky enough to pull extra characters or you've only been focusing on one or two at a time which is actually the smart thing to do this would be kind of like your backup so if you've been saving souls for that you can do that so prior to the record of glory it was definitely a good idea to focus on doing these invasion stuff so you can at least earn the characters um, because the more characters you earn the more stuff you can get for missions so it's good to have them um and then just save them for later i wouldn't push them as far as you know giving them your resources like crystals and stuff uh do it for your main people that you have that you want to do but if you've already maxed all the regular that you want then go ahead and whatever creature you like the most go ahead and do but the regular glory right now is the big thing to do right now um this if you have certain people you'll be able to 
level them uh, 1.5 times experience with double AP, which is always welcome. Uh, so I'm leveling a couple of people, getting some abilities for those I don't use very often. And by the way, I just now got Lila, by the way. So for those of you who say, why are you not doing much with her? I literally just got her, so calm down. It's okay. I know a lot of people like that particular character, so just want to like calm everyone down before they're like, why is she so under level compared to your other people? I'm sorry, I was late to the party. I've not been lucky in this game. As a matter of fact, it took me a long time to get any of the characters I actually wanted. Like, I wanted Moza, but that was easy to get. Like, the game literally gave it to you. But a lot of these other ones, like Sevia and and, and Lila, I think her name is, I, I didn't get those till much later. Which is why I'm so behind on getting everyone, like, pushed to Max Awakenings and getting their skills up. So with Sevia, I've basically stuck to the whole critical package as far as, you know, critical ups, um, extra damage to criticals. I've even upped her strength and stuff, but I'm thinking about possibly being a little more creative with her to do something else. Since I have her whole ability board filled, and I see she has a lot of ice spells too, all the good ones, all three of them actually, I might sort of build her hybrid light, but to focus more on like ice criticals to help with skills and magic, so physical and magic damage will also be okay for dealing tons of damage, and I'm not having to focus on doing strength up, magic up, just focus more on the criticals, and just get the better weapons in the game to make it to where it makes up for the lack of potential strength that I may have for her. So, yeah, there's a lot of creative things you can do here. Uh, also, for those wondering if Robin's any good, because a friend of mine had asked me a while back if Robin was any good. I didn't really know much about him at first, so I was like, he seems okay, but I never use him. But I've learned now that he's decent at helping you get more items, so if you're grinding for items, he's a good character to have. Uh, they actually have an alternate version of him now, too, which is supposed to be a lot better, because every time he crits on a creature you can potentially get an item from that creature so that's a little more consistent than getting it per kill getting it per crit potentially ups your chances so if you get the alternate version of robin you definitely got the best version for that specifically alone and more for grinding sake so yeah he's good to have and that's the only reason i'm actually even leveling him right now is just to get that so there you have it now another thing i kind of want to go over too is other little small things that have come up. I'm a little behind on making videos right now uh, for random reasons, but just wanted to give you guys kind of a quick overview of things you can do in the game. There is a boss. I've already beat it. Um, just to prove that I beat it, I already got the item for it. What is the item called? Or actually, I think I got a letter talking about me beating it. Is it this one? Yeah, this is it. It's all in, like, I guess it's Japanese, but the Jalabanga, basically, if you beat them, you get this little thing here that I can't read that basically is pr proof that you beat it and then you get an accessory as well that I can't read because it's all in what I'm assuming is Japanese uh where is that item oh I think this is it right here yeah this is it so the only thing that I'm going to assume here is that your strength defense intelligence and mind are up by five percent I don't know what the characters in between it mean at all so I'm just going to ignore that and just assume that all of those abilities there are up by 5%. And then of course the details, I have no idea. I'm, I'm assuming they're descriptions, but I can't read it. So I don't know. I haven't put it on anyone yet, but... Oh, and the other thing too that I thought was a little odd is after you beat the boss, it the dialogue is all in Japanese too. So I couldn't even read what was going on. I, I think that was kind of a, a mess up there because if you're gonna put this off for global, translate it, please. You know, so that your global players can understand. Because there's a Japanese version, right? So, you know, the Japanese versions have that and have the global players have, you know, whatever language they're in, depending on region. So that was a little off-putting to me that I couldn't even really read the story, you know, because some of us actually care about it. So that was kind of a thing. But anyway, uh, there's more things you can get to. I think it's a... Uh, where is it? It's a little game. I think it's this. Yeah, there it is. The little Pokal game here. And I'll go ahead and play one here. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, yeah, well, I've already cleared it all. If you clear it, you get, you know, something nice. 
but um, the first time, I don't think you get any more. But the whole point here is just to uh, click on matching colors and try to clear the board completely. And by only leaving, you know, a little amount as you can. Because you only can clear if you have at least, I think, two. It's a fun little puzzle game, you know. It's not something that I would spend a lot of time on. I would only do this for the sake of getting the specific item that you get for it. Yeah, I'm not doing good here. I'm not good at these kind of games. I used to be good at puzzle games. Give me some Tetris attack, I'll go off. So yeah, as you can tell, I'm just literally trying to combine everything as much as I can. Oh, that's a funny song, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I have no, I don't think I'm going to be able to win this one. I definitely botched this one hard. Yeah, so obviously I lost. But yeah, the idea here is to basically make it so there's only like one or two left and go from there. But yeah, I just want to show you that. That's a little mini game that they have going on here. I never actually listened to the music at that, so it was kind of silly. I didn't even know it had that. Because I've been playing the game mostly on silent because I'm usually in the living room with my lady. So I don't have my game stuff playing while we're like watching stuff or spending time together. Uh, the other thing too, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it, uh, they have some fishing. I'm not going to spend the whole, I'm just going to basically catch one thing and leave. But uh, basically what you do is you have to catch, you know, fish. If you go to your archive, it'll tell you how many of each fish that you've caught. And then if you get one of each fish, you get, you know, 10, time, 10 basically tickets, which is what I'm really trying to get. It's just been difficult for me to get the final one because it never shows up. And I don't know if there's a special thing I have to do, but whatever. I'm sure it'll come. And then there's another one where if you get all, like, I guess the record big catches for each one, you get an Ethereum. I think this is all luck-based. I don't think that there's any skill to it. But basically, you cast out, wait for the, water to, the ball to go under the water, and then you reel in. Just like that. And then you'll do all the work. You don't have to keep pressing nothing. Just do it one time, and boom, you get a fish. And also, if you get... Uh, the maximum amount of each fish you clear it and you get a clear reward So I already got that item for that one got that item for that one And I still got a few others to work on uh, The little crown I guess at the top right of each one tells you if you've gotten the world record I guess weight or whatever of it So there's only three that I'm missing because they don't have the little crowns at the top right of them And then of course you can also sell them so you're not just catching them for no reason uh, if you get a bunch of extra, because they will continue to give you the same fish, even if you've already cleared it. So you can just sell them off. It's not like a whole lot of profit, but it's better than nothing. You know, so you're not sitting there doing this for no, you know, good or good reason. There's also new story content. I'm not going to go over that because I don't want to do story spoilers. I'd rather you just play the game for yourself like, you know, I normally do. But yeah, they've expanded the story, so there's more areas you can go to. And the story, story is still interesting to me, you know, so I like it. Uh, they basically added more stages to certain uh, areas, so they're going to be kind of making you go around the map a bit, and that's more or less it. Um, but yeah, you know, so you have more places to grind. Actually, there is one thing I do want to mention as far as grinding is concerned, since I apparently do a lot of research on grinding. There is another place that's okay for grinding, and you can do it easy, even on normal, like if you don't have enough characters that can do well on hard on normal mode if you go to i think i already passed it imperial guard command three and i'll just do it on normal for now uh you can actually get a, a skill book and it didn't take me long to get it. i think it took me like five or six att you know, attempts and i got it uh, so you can get that and get some green and blue clusters or crystals and you know other you know just you know, decent items, so it's not a bad area to grind if you're looking specifically for that. That this is the best place that I found to get it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll even just do a quick playthrough. We'll do, uh, matter of fact, let's do this. We're gonna make a 
an interesting team here. Let's see. We'll use this person since they have the character that I didn't get. And I'm going to make just a... That's my grind. <laughs> so I don't want to use up my resources. And this is if I get new, you know, uh, heroes or creatures or whatever. I'll level them a little and do their story just to get the crystals. So we're going to take that one out. We're going to actually show off... Where is she? Right here. We're going to show her off a bit. And we're not going to use any, um, I learned that a long time ago. We're going to do an all physical crew is what I'm going to do here, actually. So we're going to do that one. I guess it's not going to be all physical since he does cast some spells, but whatever. There we go. So we're going to do those three. And then, of course, her, she's going to be the more mage type one. So, you, so we'll show you, you know, what the fight is like. You know, like I said, normal I would recommend for those whose characters are maybe not high enough. Uh, hard mode, I'm assuming ups your chances of getting the same items. I haven't really been grinding it much because I only did it to get that one item and I pretty much left. I'm also doing this just to give you guys a little more action so it's not just me talking the whole video. Now there's only one phase here, one wave. And I'm going to keep it on auto for now. And there you go. So for me, it was actually pretty easy. If I did this on hard, it would be a bit of a struggle. I could still do it. It would just be a little bit, you know, a longer video. And there you have it. So this is a decent area to potentially get those skill books if you if you need to get those and you're in the you know trying to grind and get uh, more learn abilities to your ability board. There we go. Yep. Um, as far as like the best grinding spots, what I said in the last video, I still 100% stand by. Um, so the two locations that I told you in a previous video are still places I grind for specific specific clusters and crystals and whatnot and then other than that i mean i think that's pretty much all for the update i mean there have been a few other things but nothing worth really i guess mentioning but this is the main things that have happened over the past few weeks that are worth knowing uh again enjoy the story on your own uh, i definitely recommend you know doing these events even if you don't want to get these like the invasion creatures or whatever at least collect at least one, collect it and then stop uh, just to get, you know, the rewards for collecting X amount of characters. And then, you know, if there are more modes that come out in the future that require like 12 characters, like the rumors showing right now, uh, then there you'll already have, you know, your bunch. Now, I already have a ton of, of the regular characters, so I might not need them so much. But, you know, for those who are truly free to play but don't have the time to play much, um, this is probably the envisioning up here would be the best thing for you because not only are you getting the character But you're getting a lot of their uh, souls so you can and you know awaken them uh, Faster so there you have it, uh, but for those of us who already have the majority of the regular characters Regular glory is the way to go plus you want to finish off the event so you can get all the items. I'm almost done. So I'll probably have this soon fairly soon probably within the next no, two or three days, I'll probably be done. And then the trading space, there's lots of good stuff you can get. You can get Mother Souls. Uh, you can get Clusters, if I can get down to it. Oh, you can get the uh, Dual Blade Gladius, which is really good. Um, Gold Crown, which is decent. Uh, they got the Rainbow, all the Clusters, all of the Crystals. And you can get the little Crystal Life Fragments, which is basically the default Crystals. Uh, so those are all good to get. So, you know, definitely grind for that. And, yeah, I think that's going to be it for right now. I think I put over more of the important stuff here. So hopefully this video has been informative for you guys. Got a little bit of education here. and got to show off some extra heroes. And, yeah, actually, I do like Prim. I plan on using her probably in PvP whenever that happens. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be in February. I don't know. Could be a few months out. And then I assume the tower is probably going to come shortly after. And I'm going to make another prediction. This is probably going to be maybe six to nine months out um, from after the arena starts. They're probably going to start incorporating guild play. I may be wrong on that, 
But, you know, mobile RPGs, it's a standard that guilds come together. So they're going to be probably, you know, late 2020, maybe early 2021. They're going to probably start, you know, getting people in the guilds. And then eventually after that, guild wars. That's my prediction. There's nothing online that rumors it at all. I'm just predicting it myself because I haven't seen anything about that. I don't think JP even has it anyway. Right now it's just Tower and Arena, I believe. It wasn't JP. So that's just me trying to predict the future. But other than that, that's going to be it for this video. So see you guys next time and take care. Happy New Year.